Hello and thank you for joining this uh, presentation and for those of you who will be watching this video at a later time, thank you as well for your time and your interest. My name is Amresh Deshpande and I am the India Country Manager for Forest Stewardship Council and I will be talking about uh, how we can manage India's forests more sustainably both on the supply side which would be management of forests as well as the demand side as in sourcing and use of forest uh, products that would be timber and uh, other uh, you know wood and other products but uh, before i begin i would like to talk about a quote and uh, this is from the uh, mid 1600s from uh, santukaram who lived near the pune area in, in india and the quote says vruksha valli ama soyari vanachare the trees the birds and animals uh, these are all our friends and uh, i'm very Excited to share that uh, the FSE logo conveys exactly the same message, which says forests are for all, for all forever. The trees, the birds, animals, and of course human beings, we can all live together. Before I move on to today's presentation, I would also like to talk about uh, the paths that we take. And uh, it we can manage our forest and forest products in uh, in two different ways. We can be irresponsible, continue with a lot of challenges of illegal logging, rapid deforestation, and uh, just you know let things go downhill. Or we can actually try and manage our forests in a more responsible fashion, and uh, that is best conveyed by this image uh, from the Bollywood movie Diwar, which is from the mid 1970s. And uh, the reason why I included this image is uh, not just because uh, Shashi Kapoor, who passed away recently, is one of my favorite, was one of my favorite actors, but also uh, this image conveys uh, the impact of the decision taken by two brothers. Uh, you know, one tries to take the uh, path, the wrong path; the other one takes the rightest path. And look at their body languages, and you know how they are. Uh, you know, they are so apart, even though they are so near. That is not the situation that we want to be. And uh, you know. Now, I would like to move on to the agenda for uh, this presentation. I would talk about uh, FSC, the certifications that we have, uh, what's FSC's presence in India, and also particularly about building sector and uh, forest products, particularly timber. A lot of you are from uh, the uh, uh, you know, architecture and uh, construction uh, side of uh, the industry, and I was in construction and real estate for about 12 years, both in the United States and in India before I uh, took up this role. And finally, uh, we have uh, some questions in case you have that I, I could answer. I'm pre-recording this video, so, uh, and I'm sure the Eco Hour team would have some way of making sure that I get these questions so that I can uh, respond to them in a timely fashion. About FSE, uh, FSE or Forest Stewardship Council was established in 1993. It's an international nonprofit uh, which has its headquarters in Bonn in Germany. And uh, it's got a presence in multiple countries in the world. I'll talk about uh, in the next slide. It's a membership based organization and it's a multi stakeholder organization. Now, it's very interesting uh, structure that FSE has. You have members, uh, both individuals as well as organizations, and organizations could be businesses, nonprofits, uh, etc. And members come from either the social, environmental, or economic chamber. The structure of FSC is uh, rather complex, but it's proven to be a very successful model. And there are many uh, reports and, and case studies which have been uh, written about uh, the FSC model. And I would encourage you to take a look at them by visiting the FSC website. Now, uh, FSE, over the past 20 years, uh, it's earned a reputation as a very rigorous, uh, it's a very credible forest management system, and it's one of the most trusted uh, forest management systems that it has evolved into. It has a global footprint. Uh, if you look at uh, the presence, it's a large presence in North America, Russia, and then uh, also Scandinavia. Uh, India is missing uh, in this slide, but I will talk about India specifically in a subsequent slide, so bear with me till then. You may notice here that uh, you have uh, a certain amount of uh, acreage given in million hectares and then it says, you know, percentage of total forest area. I would like to use the example of uh, Sweden, uh, where it says that 12 million hectares uh, of forests uh, are FSE certified, which is a forestry management certification. And uh, that's 43% of the total forest area. That's a large 
amount of forest in, in a particular country which is FAC certified, which means it follows certain management systems, certain uh, best practices while managing the forest resources. Speaking of FSE certifications, uh, like I said that, uh, you know, uh, there are multiple FSE certifications. Uh, forestry management is more on the, on the supply side, managing the forest and forest products. And uh, this could be both timber and non-timber, which would be, you know, in, in Indian context, medicinal herbs, it could be honey, uh, etc. And uh, then also on the demand side, uh, you have FSE on product labels which could be uh, in uh, consumer goods, it could be in packaging, uh, Tetra Pak for example, it could be in, uh, in clothing, uh, viscose, and then also you have uh, FSC controlled wood certification. Eucalyptus in particular uh, could be probably for scaffolding, could be for making pulp, etc. So, uh, you know, what are the advantages of certifications? Uh, well, you got not just economic advantage, but also social and environmental because the FSE forest management certification is pretty comprehensive and it outlines uh, several criteria. One of them is respecting the rights of uh, human beings, uh, the indigenous people who live in and around the forest. It also talks about following the law, uh, you know, law of the land. And uh, speaking of the certification themselves, uh, the process is described in this slide. It, it could be a little uh, complicated for, for you to, uh, to understand when you take a look at it at first. But I would like to give the example of the ISO organization. So ISO has multi multiple certifications like ISO 9000, ISO 14000, etc. ISO as an organization retains the IP or the intellectual property to these certifications. The actual process of uh, auditing a company, of actually developing or in implementing the uh, management systems, the documentation, the reporting structure, etc., that is done by organizations like, uh, like a TUV uh, or a certification body. FSC follows a similar structure. They also have uh, certification bodies. And in India, we have about six or seven of them. And uh, the FSC website, uh, India website, is actually uh, being, being worked on right now. By early February, you would see the list of uh, FSC's uh, certification bodies in India. So coming back to the certification process itself, uh, you have, uh, like I mentioned, you know, different types of certificates. So this process is, uh, is actually implemented by the certification bodies. One of the common questions we get asked is, uh, you know, why should we go for a certification? What type of certification should we go in for? Are the, uh, you know, how, what is the timeline required and how much is it going to cost? These are all fantastic questions and uh, I wish I had a single answer for all of these. But uh, the answer actually depends on the requirement of the organization, the way the organization is structured. So if you have an, an, uh, organ a large organization versus a small organization on the forest uh, side uh, is, is it a small holder with five to ten acres of land versus you got a large plantation with twenty thousand acres of land the the requirements will dif uh, will differ uh, of course the uh, you know the, the fee structure will differ as well at, uh, for this case and also in terms of timeline if an organization already has uh, robust structures you know reporting and, and management control systems in place the implementation time may be less compared to an organization where one has to start from scratch. Now, it will also depend on uh, the end use. If uh, you are, uh, as an organization, are uh, in the process of uh, producing paper, uh, then the requirement may be different versus if you are tr in the business of trading paper or if you are a pulp supplier to uh, many newsprints, for example. So, depending on who your customer is, uh, then also the uh, certification type of certification will vary. So um, I would encourage you to actually visit the uh, FSC website to understand more about the certification process. Now, some of the benefits of the certification process, uh, if uh, you are a timber company or if you are in the process of, uh, in, the, in the business of pro providing products which have the FSC certification, you can command a cost premium and there are organizations who are willing to pay this cost premium. On the forest management side, uh, I would like to give the example of uh, Tripura Forest uh, Management Corporation, uh, the Development Corporation. The area experienced uh, in, in Tripura, uh, there is a process, uh, the practice of jhum cultivation, which is you cut down the forest, you burn the ground and you grow crops on it. And once the soil is no longer uh, productive, you move on. So uh, actually implementing forest management certification helped in reducing this uh, jhum cultivation 
uh, practice, uh, the area under uh, jhum cultivation, uh, the people over 1200 families got means of alternative livelihood and then of course the forest area was regenerated. So, uh, you know, this is the social as well as environmental and economic impact of uh, FSA certification, what, you know, uh, many organizations refer to as a triple bottom line. Now, uh, in case of UP Forest Corporation, uh, they obtained a certification in 2015. Their original trigger was that they wanted to compete in international markets when they were supplying timber, particularly teak from Uttar Pradesh, uh, from forests in, in Uttar Pradesh. And uh, EU, uh, the European Union and many uh, countries, uh, many organizations in North America have very stringent procurement policies wherein uh, all uh, you know, timber and wood suppliers have to have a sustainable forestry certification. And uh, many of them recommend uh, FSE certifications. That, that was the trigger for the UP Forest Corporation. Now, uh, the impact was that there were, there were over 20 buyers who wanted to buy this FSE certified timber and they are willing to pay a premium uh, just because they know now that uh, the wood that they're obtaining, the timber that they're obtaining is, uh, has been harvested sustainably and it certainly has uh, other you know, social as well as environmental impact. Uh, not just that, uh, you know, there were, uh, there were some other benefits, uh, you know, the fruit trees in and around the forest, plants which are used in Ayurvedic medicines, uh, you know, you can manage those areas much better as well as promoting ecotourism. So with that, uh, I will talk about uh, FSC in India. We have a presence uh, here since 2000 and over 5 lakh hectares or 500,000 hectares of forest is certified. Uh, there are seven forest management certification holders. I just talked about a couple of them uh, in uh, UP and Tripura. And uh, on the business side, on the demand side, there are about 380 chain of custody holders. So uh, basically, there is a, a documentation process which is called chain of custody, uh, which essentially documents uh, that the uh, along the different phases, uh, you know, from source uh, for in the forest all the way to the point of consumption, uh, you know, the, the processes that have been followed for ensuring compliance or adherence with the FSC certification process. So uh, the businesses uh, include uh, both Indian and multinational, large and small. You know, global brands like uh, Tetra Pak. You got uh, you know timber companies. You got newsprint companies, and then also packaging organizations. Now, this is great. I, th I think we're off to a good start. Uh, but if we look at the big picture, there are over 80 million hectares of forest and tree cover in India, according to the Ministry, uh, you know, the, the Forestry Report uh, in 2015. So that's like one by 160th of the total forest cover in India. And if we were to translate this into economic terms, and we are working on these metrics. So FSC globally actually has two uh, two sets of metrics. Uh, one is how many certificate holders you have and how much area, land area you have under, uh, under you know, certification. Now, what does this mean in economic terms? What does this mean in maybe ecological terms? Uh, you know, I would love to present more quantifiable uh, data, uh, which I don't have right now, but uh, we are working on that. And maybe in a, in a subsequent uh, conversation, I would love to present more uh, data and, and which would be specific to India that what does this you know, 500,000 hectares of certified forest mean in economic terms. Uh, you know, what is the percentage of certified, uh, you know, products which are procured by these 380 odd organizations versus their total, uh, you know, procurement budget. We are working on that. But in the meantime, uh, let me talk about uh, sustainable wood and building sector, which is, I would like to spend a few minutes talking about it uh, because Wood is one area, particularly timber. Uh, India imports quite a lot of it, and I'll talk more on, in the next slide on that. But uh, when you're when you're importing uh, wood or timber from outside of India, give preference to certified wood because then you would know where it is uh, harvested from. Uh, you know where what was the source of that particular wood? Is the tree uh, you know mature enough? What was the the ecological impact? around, you know, in the area where the tree was harvested from, what is the social impact, were people displaced for logging that particular tree? It will give you a lot more information about it. Uh, similarly, for domestic, uh, you know, why not give preference to producers or suppliers of certified uh, timber or wood? I, uh, you know, hopefully these seven organizations will grow into more number of organizations. And as we focus on, uh, you know, working with, uh, with organizations which, uh, the state-owned forest corporations and other organizations which own, uh, you know, or which have rights to forests, basically, uh, to bridge that gap between 80 million hectares and, and a half a million hectares, right? 
uh, if uh, the buyers start giving preference to certified wood, it will definitely trigger greater response uh, or interest within the suppliers of uh, wood and wood products. Similarly, for building interiors, furniture and floors, uh, and, and then also paper and packaging. Well, construction itself does not use a lot of paper and packaging, but if you could start small, you know, why not institute policies within your organization to source wood, uh, to, to source paper, uh, which is, um, you know, made from sustainable forests. Uh, you know, uh, I, I would love to say more FSC certified paper, but if you want to go ahead and use, uh, you know, any certified uh, paper, which is made from sustainable sources, that's a great start. Similarly, the India Green Building Council has a, has a directory of uh, certified wood suppliers. And then, of course, uh, as an organization, you can uh, become members of FSC and, uh, and give more voice, uh, give more India-specific context for uh, driving uh, the, the activities in this country. Now, uh, sand should be a wake-up call. This is, uh, you know, I wanted to include this and maybe spend a minute talking about the issue of sand. When I was a student in engineering, I learned, uh, in, you know, about ABC analysis in materials management. The, uh, you know, s sand used to be a sea item. It's locally available, abundant, it's cheap, uh, you know, pilferage, wastage, etc. Not really great issues. But uh, over the past few years, uh, sand has become a big problem, uh, both uh, because of illegal sand mining and, you know, mafia and the increase in prices. There was a supply issue. Then the government also clamped down because the environmentalists were up in arms because of illegal uh, you know, sand mining. The issue became so severe uh, that certain projects were delayed. Uh, they were, you know, around Chennai area, there was talk about importing sand from Indonesia. I mean, who would have thought that a C item could, uh, you know, suddenly become a B item just because of either, you know, it, uh, not so great practices, uh, some, uh, you know, uh, not uh, very good or robust policies, and maybe just mismanagement of a resource which is locally available. You know, you did not respect a natural resource and suddenly it became a problem. The problem could be bigger in case of wood and uh, wood products. You know, we're already importing a lot of it and, uh, you know, let sand be a wake-up call for, for all of us within, the, you know, those who were or are or associated with the building sector in India that uh, it's going to get even worse with wood. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, illegal logging is a major problem globally. And uh, if you see the wood and wood products uh, imports in India, uh, in terms of rupee value, it's just increasing. Or there was a slight, slight dip a, lot, a couple of years ago, but it's showing an increasing trend. There are some other statistics, uh, some other data, which is showing that actually imports have reduced. But I have actually, uh, you know, spent some time understanding the imports for timber, and and this uh, particular graph was uh, is is consistent is consistent with. Uh, the majority of the reports that I've seen that the, the in terms of rupee value, in terms of volume, the, the timber imports in India are increasing and a lot of it is illegal. And uh, this particular chart shows uh, that India is actually the third largest importer of illegal wood in the world. And a lot of it comes from Southeast Asia uh, in particular. And uh, this is a problem. This is a report from Hindustan Times uh, into, you know, in 2016 last year. So what is the impact of all this uh, illegal uh, uh, logging that's happening? There is impact on biodiversity. There is an impact on climate change, of course. And I would like to clarify that uh, when you see this uh, annual report, uh, annual import in USD, those are million dollars. I think in the publication, they forgot to mention this small detail. So the question is, uh, what is being done about it? What is being done to curb illegal imports globally, right? As uh, from the building sector, like I said, that, you know, just, just take a call that if it is, not certified uh, timber, you'll not use it uh, because then that will curb down the illegal import part. What's happening globally is that uh, you know uh, FAA report in 2015 stated that half the world of uh, half of the world's tropical forests have been cleared, which is the bad news. But the good news is many countries are implementing policies, many organizations are implementing policies because of which forest areas are coming under protection. They are managed better, and that has actually slowed down the rate of deforestation or illegal logging globally. So this is the importance of a good forest management practice and then as, as a buyer, as a consumer, buying products which are uh, certified. With that, I would uh, like to conclude uh, this presentation. Uh, thank you again for your time. You can reach out to me via email. Uh, the FSC India website, like I said, is, uh, is not yet ready. However, we do have a Google Plus page and I have provided a link to that. I would love to hear, I would love to hear uh, your feedback, any questions that you have that I can answer. I'd be more than happy to do that. With that, thank you.